yo, yo. Chilies and Scoops <laughs> podcast. <laughs> We're starting a podcast. <laughs> My name is Estrogen, better known as Michelle Stylin to God. God? Yeah, that's who named me. No, your parents named you, Michelle. I don't have parents. What the fuck? It's true. That's why I never grow up. Sad. It's not sad. It's a great life. The it's not good. It's part is sad and not true. All right, I've got lots of parents. <laughs> so many parents. Everyone's my mom because I'm a slob. I'm kind of your mom sometimes. You are, and my daughter. Yeah, it's it's a weird I role it. I play here. I love it. <laughs> All right, this podcast okay. is called Chilies and Scoops. I don't come from God. Wait, yeah, I'm uh, Ivy, also known as Spicy Ivy on Instagram, but my name is Ivy. You could call me Ivy. Yeah, and you'll learn how she really feels about that <laughs> later. <laughs> yeah, we'll get into that. We talk a lot about skating. We skate a lot about skating. It's and like all we do. Yeah, that's why we wanted to start a podcast because we're like, other people out there are doing this too. I'm going to share the story uh, of we were in the, we were taking a long drive one night, one day, I think it was during the day. And we were just talking, we were like going on spiel after spiel after spiel about skating and about, well, just, pretty much just all the stuff that we're going to get into on the podcast. But like we were talking about it for so long and I was like, dude, there has to be people that would listen to this. <laughs> like people, there's probably people that some, someone out there that would like, maybe gain something from hearing this conversation. Even our having. haters. Yeah, even our haters. Yeah. Yeah, we got a little segment for you guys too. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Spicy and Ivy and I are... Spicy and Ivy. Hot and, I. and cold, young and old. What if we switch jumpsuits sometimes? We should. Like, this I was like, chill uh, we're like, okay, what's the name of our podcast going to be? Well, you've got the whole spicy thing going Shine on and I'm known for eating a lot of ice cream and she's known for eating a lot of ice cream and we eat a lot of ice cream together and we're like oh like we go for the whole hot cold theme um because she's like spicy and hot and I'm like cold and old so oh she gave me the like <laughs> the red suit it makes no sense she picked red oh, okay she picked red i wanted green but she really wanted red so i wanted a bright color that is I bright we're gonna be like orange and red well oh man i should have fucking gotten orange <laughs> i could have gotten orange and you could have been red anyway chilies and scoops is the name of our podcast our Costumes are not important. You probably didn't even know we're wearing costumes because this is our first episode and we haven't time. shown you that it's a costume. They'll know next time. <laughs> when, we, when we are in them again. <laughs> yeah, because maybe if we didn't clarify that, they'd just be like, did these crazy ladies just film all these in one sitting in the same <laughs> outfits and the same like, you know? Hairstyles. Yeah, but we didn't. Mm-mm. So is this yeah, an intro? we th yeah, this is our <laughs> podcast. <laughs> we got a podcast. It's called Chilies and Scoops. We're talking about roller skating. We're talking about roller skating and everything about it. Yeah, anything that you think could relate to roller skating will probably be brought up. Are we going to show skating on the show? Yeah, yeah. Are we going to talk about other skaters? Yeah, yeah. Are we going to bring other skaters on the show? Yeah. Just not today. <laughs> yeah, just not right now. This is our intro episode. Yeah, we're going to let you guys get to know us a little bit. Get to know what uh, we're going to talk a little bit about, like what we got going on here. Our next major event together and, and you know, in the skating community. We are just starting. Like we don't have any socials planned to tell you about. But I'm going to guess that you can look us up as Chilies and Scoops on all social media platforms. Soon. And Soon, yeah. I'm going to guess that the first thing you can do is buy merchandise from our site. <laughs> yeah, you should. Because we're motivated. Yeah. <laughs> it's for a good cause. <laughs> You'll learn about it. Yeah, if you listen. So we're new to this, slow to this. 
And you can speed up our voices if we bore you. Yeah, we're, we're always open to some constructive criticism Just in the comments. Down and to the right, you can speed us up and blaze through this and save yourself some, some more skating time if you want. Mm. Yeah. Episode Here it one. Goes. <laughs> <laughs> Episode one. Okay. All, All right. right. Here, Here it goes. goes. Episode, Episode one. one. Chilies and scoops. <laughs> <laughs> Will we eat ice cream on the episode? Will we eat ice cream oh. in this podcast? Yeah. We got to change from, we're not this episode, next episode though. Every guest that brings us ice cream, I will give a foot massage to bear one. No socks. Shit. While interviewing them. Oh, shit. Yeah. What? That's great. We that's get ice cream. Awesome. They get a massage. Yeah, that's fucking awesome. I love skaters' feet. Weird for that. That's weird for that? You you are w weird for that. A little. For liking skaters' feet? Yeah, like... It's it's oddly specific. Well, when you got feet like mine, everyone's are fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Maybe we should have a foot. No, no, no. That's we're not gonna have a foot reveal. Show off our feet. Oh no, you don't want to. No, yours aren't that. How's your how are your toenails looking? The polish. I painted them. Like the nail, it's. Now, nah, you know, we're going to like not get any subscribers if we if do we this on show our one. feet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. In this episode, we're going to be introducing ourselves, talking about an event coming up, talking about sponsorships, Dog Days Magazine, skaters we're stoked to see at Quad Cup. How do we know each other, Ivy? Social media. Oh, I called you while you were at the skate park. Yeah, you did. Well, remember, well I, was I remember on the street. I remember I was in Arizona with some of my good friends and I woke up to a fucking message from you. And I and you were like, "Yo, I want to sponsor you." Way before you blew up on Instagram. Yeah, way before. And I was like, "Oh my fucking god, estrogen messaged me." <laughs> Freaked out. I lost my mind. Aww. I freaked out. And and I you invited me to to join a call with everyone that was like on the team or that was like joining the new program that was happening. And I was like, oh, it's real. It's happening. <laughs> that was my dream. That and oh yeah. Oh my God. That was like my biggest dream. And it came true like way sooner than I thought it was going to. And I was like, fuck, I have to find a new dream way sooner than oh, I thought I was gonna have to. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. And now like I, I don't even fucking know. I don't know what my dream is. Just to be, to to be happy and skate. Yeah, and like to stay steady. No You're worries. on track. Yeah. You're on track. You got a lot of people that got your back. Thanks, so. psyched for you. Because you're talented, motivated, ambitious, and young. Mm. <laughs> you got a long, long, skatey life ahead of you. I hope so. All the kids look up to you so much. Oh, I look up to them. Like <laughs> me too. <laughs> it's insane. Jeez. They're, They're the best. They really are. They're great. You skate with them. So uh, we came together through sponsorship. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and then, then like, oh man, we met in Barcelona. No, 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 no. We met. I met you before that. Remember? <laughs> because, oh fuck, this is a great story to tell. I was going to come out and visit you for the Nordstrom thing. Oh, remember? Yeah. Okay. This episode just got way longer. <laughs> yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. So I had plans. You, this was going to be like my first, my first trip out to California for skate for, for park skating and like with Moxie and I was going to be with Michelle and legs and shove and everybody. Like, it was a job. There was a gig. Yeah. yeah the Nordstrom like oh, Wayfair yeah. thing. And we're flying Ivy out. Yeah, and they were going to fly me out. And we couldn't wait to meet you. It was so exciting. And it was like the start of my like career Skate as career. a skater. Yeah. And then two weeks before that, I shattered my fucking kneecap. Let's, let's play the clip. Oh, yeah, that's good. <laughs> uh. 
What even is that trick, Ivy? I don't fucking, I don't know. I was trying to do the whole like, like edges. Thing. Like a cess slide on two wheels yeah. or four? Two. I was trying to do- Cess slide okay, on well, two wheels. So so I had, what I had done be, before, like I've done the, the whole like, air out and onto like my inside wheels and then go oh, back Oh yeah. In. But this, someone earlier that day had given me um, inspiration to try. Oh my God, yeah. All right. So we were aiming, we were aiming for this, you know, going on the two, the two. But someone was like, yo, you should try to do like one wheel on each foot. So I was trying to do like oh. this. Oh. Uh be sick right yeah but i do it at, i'm i was doing it at like the worst fucking spot at an indoor prefab park that was like um dingily lit yeah dingily <laughs> lit there was a fucking concrete wall right behind or like brick wall right behind where i was trying to do it and like so insanely slippery like the you know those kind of those parks are just known for being slippery and um even before i went and did it i was like I'm going to fall. Like, I'm not going to land this. It's too slippery. And then I went and did it once and I fell. And then I was like, fuck it. Let's try it again. Early film this. And then, and then I broke my knee. Like smashed the patella. Yeah. Like that. Your like little, the kneecap. Busted your little bone. a kneecap. Busted Into a kneecap. Three. Into three pieces. Mm -hmm. And how long was the recovery? Um, I was skating again in four and a half months. But I like in Tony Hawk years, that's like <sighs> lifetimes. Yeah, it is. It totally is. What the hell is he doing? Tony Hawk broke his femur two weeks ago and is skating today. Yeah. Where's, is there proof of him skating yeah, today? He posted about, I was being, I was asked to, I don't know. I think he's like, announcing at the Oscars or something. He was thanking Gucci. Announcing at the Oscars? Yeah, he's he's presenting Tony. some award at some fancy thing like the Oscars or the Grammys or something. And, and he needed to get better real quick. But I broke my femur and I chose surgery over letting it heal naturally, which was going to be six months less time. And I still sat on a couch for six months until it was healed. That's insane. And this guy's two weeks later on a skateboard, like, huh? That's fucking insane. Yeah. But we didn't meet, right? Like, we still didn't meet for the first time until Barcelona, right? No, I came out and stayed with Gracie. Remember when we came over oh, and Joe right. and with Joe and Miguel and we ate salmon. Had a beach day. Oh yeah, and we had a beach day the next day, we went to the nude beach. Yeah, went to the nude beach. We dangled out. Mm -hmm. So we didn't meet in Barcelona, but we really got to know each other. Really yeah, well I mean, Barcelona. there was there was no like, um, we spent an an evening and a day together. Yeah, prior to that, and it was that it was still that I don't know that first time meeting. It was the first time I'd met you or Miguel or Joe or Gracie in real life. So. Then Ivy is invited to teach at Skate Love Barcelona and I'm going there. So we decided to travel together. And on the very first day, I'm so excited to spend time with Ivy. She falls in love. Oh my God. <laughs> we still spend time together. <laughs> uh, she falls in love with John Bellino, which is so awesome because the two of them are like, at the top of their games, winning contests, the same contest. We're just in two trying different to categories. Follow They're you so and the Miguel's adorable. steps. <laughs> we just want to be like the little miniature you and Miguel. <laughs> I think we're doing a good job. You are so adorable. I think it's cute. I don't think Miguel and I are cute. You guys yeah. are like powerhouse. <laughs> like, there's no more skating knowledge <laughs> than you and Miguel together. Yeah, it's awesome. It's great. All right, so we know each other. We travel to Barcelona together, and we're obsessed with the same things. And I love spending time with you, so it makes yeah. sense to talk about everything that we talk about in public on the internet. Yeah. <laughs> I guess.
<laughs> yeah, I mean, I hope other people enjoy hearing us talk. I'm getting tired of hearing my voice, though. I'll tell you that. Yeah. And these headphones. What do you want to hear about? Put it yeah. in the comments. Put it in the chat. We're in the chat right now. We're going to be premiering the first episode. So please, what do you want to talk about? Do you have any questions for Estro and Ivy? Yeah, maybe let's open this up. Open it up to a, like a Q&A at the end of every, you know, we don't have any, any cues to A right now. But like in the future episodes, we could yeah. open up the last part to, you know, questions that you guys have that you leave in comments on on the prior video. Do you want this live? Oh yeah, that's good. Who would you want sitting right here? Let us know. Chilies and scoops. Chilies and scoops. You sound you really sound like the Grinch with that one. Chilies and scoops. Oh yeah, that is Grinchy. It's Grinchy. I've been I really don't like my laugh. I've I love been told I have a Marge laugh. No. It just sounded like Marge. I know. <laughs> oh my God, I did not do that on purpose. You don't sound like Marge when you laugh. Unless you said Mars. Your horse. Marge. Okay. Maybe we should talk Yay. about spring cup spring cup is that what we're calling it well that's what i heard maybe on homie biz's podcast call it and then i realized I like that because i keep finding myself calling it blading cup and then i'm like oh shit i mean quad cup i mean like you know like there's yeah and there's like, like spring cup that's good and quad cup really doesn't have its own identity no not at all and it's gonna be really successful yeah it's gonna be absolutely rad. it's gonna oh, be I'm so stoked. awesome okay it's happening it's um, a festival of skate contests. Four day festival. <laughs> so normally there is bleeding cup, which happens in November and it's like a, a two day, right? Mm -hmm. Two day, two day festival. Well, I wouldn't, would they even call it a festival? No, it's just like a street yeah, comp. A two day uh, comp where they, they block off the, they like rent out a, a block in Santa Ana and just like makeshift a bunch of ramps. You know? yeah, so blading cup had a great turnout last year. Um, and as far here. as, as with quad skaters and, you know, skaters of all kinds, I should say, I shouldn't limit it to that. It was, it was seemed like there was a lot of people. That was my first blading cup, but it seemed like, uh, and there's been 10. Yeah. I didn't know that. That's wild. Yeah. I think I've been to four of them. We, uh, we were watching some highlights from, from previous Blaining Cups the other day, and it was... Some of the other courses don't look as bad as last year's did. No offense. <laughs> it wasn't bad for no, bladers. No, 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 it wasn't bad. They were bad. able it to looked, do stuff I, on what it. I, what I mean by that is the it was previous a, ones look like more doable for me. I'll speak for myself. The thing is, we've got four lines of wheels, so we kind of need like an easy entry to the ramp. Yeah. And if, if there isn't one, it's slower to get onto the ramps. It's harder yeah. to a little, thrust a little more difficult. your energy into them. Okay, okay so well, Blading yeah. Cup. Let's get to the point. Ooh, stoners. Okay, so where I was going with that is the, <laughs> uh, there, was an, um, there was a really good turnout, so they decided in, with, with thanks to M Michelle... John Julio. <laughs> and John Julio, but John Julio and Michelle collaborating. And now they uh, decided to invite us quad skaters to also have some events at this now festival. Yeah, I think the city of Santa Ana really loves Blading Cup because it's such a great thing for downtown. Mm -hmm. And they asked John if they would do a second one. So I think to differentiate it, mm. he, Turned it into a festival city, and added quad. The city came to John. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, the that's city. That's awesome. Because mm -hmm, it like is a good. Yeah. Stem oh, that's really for awesome. the local. Yeah, econ. man. I bet those businesses on that street get get a lot of attention. Yeah, I ate a lot of that ice cream. Oh, me too. Mm. Too much. Too gross. It's good. Okay. See, distracted. We keep getting so... All right. We're not breaking it into gender. <laughs> That's one thing. Uh, the bleeding competition is broken down into like 17 and under, men and women. 
Actually, I don't think they call it women. They call it ladies. Yeah. Which I think is really cool. Cause like rollerblading was, I mean, inline skating was called rollerblading because a brand came in and was like, Oh, I'm just going to wipe my brand over the sport and call it rollerblading. Mm -hmm. And even I remember like Woodward, when we were doing the moxie skate camps, they're like, so what do you call this style of skating? Do you call it moxie skating? And I was like, no, we're not going to do that. (laughs) (laughs) No, not like rollerblading did or rollerblade did. Um, Okay. So bladies. Yeah. They, they, the Bladies brand name actually is the name for like the, the category of the women competing, which is interesting. Yeah, I, I agree. Interesting. And there's always been less women competing than men in blading, but that is just not our case. No. And Complete I opposite. get last year, Miguel told me that there are 300 competitors for the inline. Like, like I was in, t- in total. Yeah. So and I would have thought more. Wow. I didn't, I thought a hundred competitors is like for, cause like a hundred people signed up for quad and I was like, that's so many. Oh, I bet. I mean, I, I'm sure the list is going to grow. Yeah. I bet it was. I mean, that's just a start. We're competing. Yeah. And so many other people, apparently a hundred other people are also competing. And I keep like every, every day, like honestly, multiple times a day, sometime I keep like refreshing the the website to like, keep looking at the list of people. We need to add the Instagram handles. Yeah, we should, because I don't know who half these people are. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Your Ivy Wall cut How do you say your last name? Ivy Wall Muckenhaupt. Oh, say that again. Well, muck and helped. That's not what I like. And that's not what I put down on, on my like registration. Cause it's like too much. Well, muck and comped. Helped. Muck and helped. Muck and helped. Mm-hmm. Muck and helped. Yeah. I like hated it growing up. What is it? It's German. Oh, my last name's German too. Really? Yeah. It means steep. Uh. What are we talking about? Not, <laughs> no more of that. Quad. Um, all the people signed up. That's where I, that's where I was drifting to. Um, and thinking I'm, I'm really excited to see who comes. And I think, I think a lot of people are going to be very surprised with the like amount of talent that is there. Yeah. I think a lot of people are going to show up and surprise a lot of people. Yeah. And there's like people from Argentina coming. I know there's people from Australia coming, people from Colombia. Chuffed. Yeah. Chuffed is uh-huh. coming. It's going to be awesome to see all the quad skaters. And I think all that, the skaters. that, um, you remember when we were in Miami and we all found that, that video of that girl chat, that was a horrible description. She did like a 360 porn star down a ledge. Yeah. And then also she did like a really clean, um, like true spin 50 over a hip in a bowl. But I'm pretty sure person. if I'm not mistaken, no, 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 no. That's not who I'm talking about. Um, mm. This person. This uh, is who I'm talking about. A kid from Argentina. Oh, Vashti. Yeah. And we like, we all watched oh, her edit, remember? Right. Yeah. And we all, we all watched Australia? it. Like, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure they're from Australia. Hey, Vashti, are you listening? Are you out there? Are you coming? Do you know? Um, I think I believed it. We should I, DM them. I think that some of her friends are coming, which makes me think that she's coming. You should come. <laughs> Everyone should come. Okay. What are you coming to? It's, um, all right, we'll get to the point. There's going to be a street contest oh, and yeah. a mini ramp contest and a limbo contest and a high jump mm. for inline and for quad. Mm. And there's going to be an intermediate, like, Intermediate contest for the street and the ramp and an advanced contest for the street and the ramp. Mm-hmm. And uh, as, as indifference to how the, the blading is doing it, we are not dividing it up by men and women. Yeah. But how do you know if you belong in intermediate or advanced? That's probably one of the most popular questions when we're signing up. I I didn't, I haven't even really given that much thought if I'm being honest. Like every street skater that I know is, that is, would, that I would say is like, oh, they're so good at street skating. They all asked me, 
should I sign up for intermediate or advanced? Yeah. And I think we're just like in this starting place where nobody knows, you know, we've never been brought together to know if you're advanced or intermediate compared to what inliners. Yeah. Uh, We have no comparison. And and I think because we have no comparison, this is like getting into a whole different spiel, but find our, at least I find myself comparing myself to bladers and to their, you know, culture. And I think it's just because we don't have, or I shouldn't say culture, their tricks. Yeah. Because we don't have anything to like compare it to. So yeah, that's a whole other thing though. I think a lot of people were confused why the registration was so expensive. Maybe not confused, but oh, frustrated yeah. why the, why the registration was so expensive. And it's because it works in a, we got to do it ourselves. We yeah. don't have a whole lot of sponsors that are like, Hey, we should have competitions and let's create them ourselves. We've got a bunch of skaters that are like, Hey, let's have competitions and create yeah. it ourselves. So, but we do have a lot of spot. We do have a lot of people sponsoring it. Like Bont got in on it. Mm. I saw Impala. Uh, there were some sh- shops like Pigeon Skates. And Dakota. if you go uh, to Bleeding Cup on Instagram, you can see all the sponsors and all the companies that are supporting the event, which is really awesome. Yeah. And you can also look on the website to see everyone that is, will be competing. Yeah. And it's going to be like a trade show. There's going to be, uh, all the sponsors will have booths so you can walk around and see. And if I'm not mistaken, we're getting more than one. We're getting like the whole parking lot. We're going to have a booth. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I, well, sorry, yeah. Sorry. I see what you're Side trying note. to say. Chili's and Scoops is going to have a booth. So yeah, make sure that booth. you stop by at <laughs> our booth. Um, yes. The city of Santa Ana is repaving the parking lot for this event. Yes. So, so if I you, think. if you were at any previous Blading Cups, there will be a lot more room. Yeah. For this and it's going to be much bigger. Shenanigans. How many people do you think were there last year watching? Uh, oh, just watching. Like remember we were on top of that garage there was it. I feel like there was at least a hundred people just in the garage, like on that level that we were at. No, like total on the oh. whole. You think more? I don't know. I'm really bad with gauging. Yeah, numbers. I think there was probably fifteen hundred people there at least. It's going to be the first competition that I know of that is this big. Yeah, definitely. I mean, what what competitions have you? Do you, do you have any to... Yeah, we went to the Frankie Morales competition, I yeah. announced. Yeah. And Ivy won. <laughs> Wasn't the plan. <laughs> no, that was not the plan. Uh, but it was it was awesome. Great, <laughs> great. And I actually, I keep, I keep saying that it was my first comp, but I actually, back in Colorado, like right before I broke my knee last year, there was like a, like a little mini ramp jam comp hosted by Andy Roy. And I went to that and got best trick, which was pretty cool. So I think that that was probably my first. Was that a skateboarding contest? Yeah. So you're a roller skater in a skateboarding contest. Yeah. And you won best trick. Yeah. It was sick. It was really cool. Um, So yeah, I guess the the Frankie thing was my first like against roller skaters. I've never. Which was really fun. Oh, it was so fun. I think I'm bred for that kind of. Yeah, you are. I like. Laser focus. Yeah. Like I'm good at just tuning everything dropping out. in and like all I know is what's in the ramp or the bowl or the Yeah, I was like, how do you remember what you want to do next? Oh, I, don't. I know you didn't practice this. <laughs> no, no. I just I don't know. It just comes. I think you did like a five backwards moonwalk. No, I think I only did People four. People losing it. Okay, four. Five, five's coming up next though, I guess. You just put that in my brain. I was just playing the um, advanced Igor's game. Do you mm-hmm. know what that is? Mm-hmm. It's like the international game of roller skate on Facebook. And I haven't played actually any games. I tried starting a couple games, but I didn't ever finish I rem- them. I remember at the beginning of COVID, we, we played a virtual game of skate. That was Instagram. Yeah. DMs. But this is like a Facebook group where like 5,000 yeah, yeah, yeah. people I, are I was playing. a part of it when I... For, for a while, but then it got like out of control and I was like, I gotta go. Yeah. There's a tons of, I gotta go. There's a ton of games <laughs> playing at all times, but there's an advanced game and somebody did, somebody set the trick, um, doing the moonwalk. You take the back foot for, you take the back foot and you walk the moonwalk forward. 
Yeah. I've, I've been thinking about, um, trying to like just lock on with one foot instead of like locking in out of the 50 and then stepping over. Like if you just like jump into like an alley macchio and then just like throw your front foot down and just, and then start running like that. Oh you know what yeah. I mean? Rather than play. Yeah. Rather than stepping. Yeah. It's like, like you just kind of, yeah, it's, it's more, more like bouncy, I guess. I want to try. Last year, the, my favorite thing about Bleeding Cup was the theater. They had like the theater. Yeah. yeah, that was really cool. Like I every, didn't really know what we were getting ourselves into when we like were going in. I didn't know. Like all the newest videos that were out, like they premiered there on the same night and we watched like five videos, like a whole film festival in this theater. And they That's asked really cool. us if we wanted to show anything. So I'm hoping that Megan Schaefer finishes her part so that maybe we can show it there, but it'd be really cool. Megan, how's it going? Megan, <laughs> Megan shreds so hard. Yeah. I'm really excited to see her part. It's going to be, Me uh, too. it's going to be like, it's mo monumental. It's the word. Yeah. Who else out there is making a part right now? Put it in the chat. We want to watch or it. Or if you have come out with a part and we, you know, Megan put one together this year. We've been watching her in the background, putting it together. We've watched her just walk away from rails, totally bleeding, like bloody and defeated. Like fucked up. Like looking. so bad. And she waits for her body to feel better again and gets back up and does it two days later. Sometimes she doesn't wait long enough. I'm going to call her out on that one. She's, she's ruthless. Megan Schaefer, look her up. I have no idea. I, I uh, also who's have no going to take the money uh, because, like I said, I think Cup. that there's a lot of people that are going to come and really fucking surprise everyone. Like I really, I really do. I think that there's a lot of people that are not recognized in the skating world that have um, like who. Like the, like this Vashti girl and the, the other girl that you're talking about, a lot of the, um, Argentinian girls and Colombian girls that I see on, um, skating with like, like Luz, like Luz Can't and Moco skating really. and, uh, Moco is not coming though. I don't think. Oh, is she not? But check out Moco. She's, yeah, she's amazing. I love Moco. She just came out with a part actually. Uh, a couple months not, ago. Yeah. Not, not too long ago. Yeah. Make sure you check that out if you haven't already. For Bont? She skates for Bont? She does skate for Bont, but I think that it was more, uh, like a self-titled project. And we just saw Barbie, and she was going to go film another project with Moko. Uh, are you sure they're filming? I thought that they were, um, I'm pretty sure they're doing teaching. Oh, that's right. They're having, yeah, they're like not a, a little two-day teaching You're right. thing in Barcelona. Really cool. Really jealous, but then Bar but then Barbie's coming back to America, and we get to keep her for a couple months. Yes, for the summer. So exciting! Who are you excited to see? Skate? Yeah. Um, the kids. Oh, I'm. Oh, yeah. Like, That's gonna be awesome. I'm like, oh, training with the kids and trying to get them to. Get it really excited and organize their tricks and that's expand gonna, their minds be and awesome. like just watching the kids is going to be really cool. Seeing how they, seeing how they handle it, I think they're going to be really stoked to compete. May and Noodle going out and street skating the other day. I know, so awesome, cool. killing it. <laughs> so awesome to see. Lily, amazing. May, me, all of them. Liberty, Birdie, they're amazing. They're incredible. Noodle, Lila, all of them. Skate Cadets team, kids team. Pretty sure most of them, are, all most of them, not all of them are signed up. Some of them are kind of anti-contest. I feel like I've been anti-contest. Yeah, I'd, which is like, that's another thing. Don't feel pressured to like sign up just because it's, you know, I've, a lot of other people are doing it. I just don't like doing anything for anybody else <laughs> like yeah it, like and like, I mean it I do really... it for myself so when I'm skating I don't know what I'm doing three tricks ahead like it's just I'm just like doing I don't know like when I tried to organize uh, a line 
I was like, okay, what if this was quad cup right now, what would I be doing? Like every time I, I, like, I don't want a lunch break. I overheard them saying at quad, at, you know, the organizer were like, I was like, Hey, what do I tell people when they're wondering whether they're intermediate advance? And someone answered me, well, they shouldn't be doing any lunch breaks. No backside stalls. You get eliminated if you do a backside stall. That's and I was like, John, ah! has, John was like, it's like, if I tell anybody that that's going to panic any everyone yeah. like and then I was trying to organize my tricks like without backside stalls and I'm like like you really have to know when you're gonna set up an alley -oop trick and when you're gonna set up a forward trick. yeah absolutely and like and that's like a different kind of like skill in skating I feel like it like is a whole different being a planner yeah yeah like skaters aren't planners yeah but but competing is fun if you don't have pressure i mean i like my pressure is more about like inadequacy of like my brain like i can't remember what i'm gonna do next so i might just like get nervous and yeah, just and love it yeah and and flop that happens yeah that happens and that'll to be pretty fine. often that's okay yeah it's like not but it would be way more fun to like just have fun and be able to finish it yeah, that's Maybe. that's the goal. This is, you can't like we can't expect. You can't go into things like this with like expectations. Yeah, you really do just have to like do it for yourself and do it for like the fun. the feeling, of, the fun. Yeah, like if you're not having fun, who wants to not have fun in front of everyone? And like in your skating, you can tell. I mean, I can tell when watching people skate if they're having fun or not. Yeah. And it, like, def it makes a huge difference in like, st I think that that plays a role in style. It's, it's for having fun. Yeah, totally. What would you do if you won? Uh, like with the money? Buy everybody drinks. Oh, that's good. That's a good answer. No, no, actually, no, I would not. I'm not going to win. So that's not a thing. Why do you say that, Shell? Because I know and I don't even want to win. And like. Why? Because it's not my place. Like, this is something that I'm like making for other people to enjoy. And the reason why I'm participating is so that I'm a good sport. Because I really am not a competing person. I don't want to win. I'm going to do it for fun. But I feel like if I don't compete, then maybe I will. I don't know. I mean, Miguel was like, you shouldn't compete. You're doing this for other reasons to like establish the sport. And then I'm like, yeah, but all my friends, like, like Carly and you, like, to take your, to take, I don't know, I got a bad reaction from my friends. Like, no, what, we're going to compete and you're not? Like, it should be a whole thing yeah, where we're I mean, all doing it, it for should, fun. It, like, it should be. You should be up there with all of us. Yeah, and I want to. Yeah. And if I wanted, I'd probably give all the money back to all the registration fees. Aw. So, don't let me win. <laughs> oh man, you make me sound like a dick when I share my answer. Well, I'm twice your age, <laughs> Ivy. <laughs> Yeah, we I'm, are in I'm totally that different money and I'm places. Putting it in that savings account, getting that new apartment. Maybe go get myself a new pair of shoes. Me and John go get some Korean barbecue. <laughs> That's what I'll do with the money. I want Ivy to win. <laughs> you can come to Korean barbecue with us too if I win. <laughs> or you, you know what? You get your own. We can have our own date. We can have our own Korean barbecue time. Yeah. Well, I like John. I like our. I like being the third wheel. Yeah. To you and John. I love you and John. I love John. Me too. I love you more. Mm. But I'm twice Ivy's age. It's really interesting. Yeah. Our friendship. It is. Because I feel like my skating career just started. Like always. <laughs> I always feel like my skating career. Oh, but. It's just started. It, it, it hasn't. You have, so, no. you have so many stories. Doing it so forever. Many, you, because sometimes I feel, I feel the opposite sometimes. I feel like I've been doing this for a while. And then, you know, you just you have so many damn stories. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't, I haven't done, sh I, I mean, I've done, I've done shit, but I haven't done, I haven't done shit. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I haven't been, about I haven't to do been, shit. I haven't like been around long enough to do the shit. Like, all right, let's, let's talk about your experience as a skater, Ivy. Okay. 
you have a very long experience as a skater. And I think that's one, one thing that we like make brings us together. Yeah. Um, well, I started, I started playing roller derby when I was five, uh, because my mom started playing. What year were you born? 2000. I started playing roller derby in 2005. Yeah. So <laughs> or, me too. Well, I, I should say, <laughs> my, <laughs> 2006, I, I guess we'll, I'll go. Yeah. 2006 actually is when I think I did. My mom like started November, in like 2005, 2000. Yeah. 2005. And then I started 2006. So I am of your mom's generation of roller derby. I'm in that generation too. I'm just like in the eight, the, the age generation under, but I'm still in the like first, oh, yeah. yeah you we're know? of the same. Derby I was probably generation. one of the, I was probably in one of the f- like first ever junior roller derby leagues. Junior. I, I think I might've started one of the first junior roller derby leagues, which angel city. No, um, it was in Kalski grand terrace and it was a derby brats league which was an extension we of the Seattle the Derby, Brats. Derby Brats. Yeah. But when I started the, the California League, there was only the Seattle Derby Brats. Mm-hmm. Well, we were up there too. <laughs> Give us a little credit. We, we, <laughs> no, we started I'm, early. No, I just, I, <laughs> oh, I'm just saying, I don't think you were the first because I know no. that Seattle Derby Brats. No, was I don't the think first. we were, I don't think we, that we were the first either, but. Okay, so you started when you were five. How long did you play for? Um, I played until I was 18, until I aged out, but I did take a, a little break. 13. Yeah, so 13 years. Um, but I took a little break when I was like in like sixth grade when I was going through this like that like transition from like elementary school to middle school. And you're like, I was trying to be a cool kid. And like, I don't know what in my mind thought that that playing roller derby like wasn't cool well your mom but I did like, it yeah I, th- I think that that's it and like you know what wh- when you do something for so long you're like especially as a child you're kind of you're gonna get bored of it after a while or like you know get tired of it but yeah I just thought I was like too cool to play roller derby and so I stopped and played like basketball and volleyball and did like you know basic sports which was cool and then I got back into to derby and stuck with it for quite a while. Um, when I, when I joined Derby again, after my little break, I decided to change, I was 12 and I decided to change my roller derby name from poison Ivy. That was like what it was initially. And then, and then I almost changed it to chef boy or die. (laughs) That one's good. Right. (laughs) (laughs) But that one didn't, I didn't do that one. But then, and then I went back to Poison Ivy because like, back to my roots, you know. But then uh, 18, um, when I was 18, I started trying to park skate because of um, my, my roller derby coach at the time was also, she owned a skate shop. And I started working at the skate shop and hanging out with all of the skateboarders that were, that would come in and then. What skate was, shop was it? It was called House of Skate. It's not open anymore. Oh. But we sold moxies. Then I got a pair of moxies and started going to the park. And then I broke my wrist like four months into park skating. And it was like right before nationals for roller derby. And I I totally like proved my, uh, my teammates right. Because they were all like really mad at me for not wearing gear at the skate park and but like for the right reason like they were like we don't want you to hurt yourself and then not be able to you know compete in your last junior roller derby season did you play with a cast no they wouldn't let me it's like a hazard or some shit which Mm. it kind of is i understand that i could like whack somebody with that yeah lady trample once told me that the reason why she started chicks and bowls originally or cib now is because there was so much resistance to roller derby skaters or there was so much resistance to park skaters that played roller derby skating in the parks because they wouldn't be available to the like to the yeah. team to compete so she wanted to create kind of a support group and yeah um and then normalize 
doing more than roller derby skating. Yeah, but then why not? But then I I couldn't do both at the same time. I I decided. I I realized shortly after that I I really liked skating for myself. Yeah. And not for a team or for a coach or for a roster or, you know, like Yeah, no rules. No parents, yeah, no rules. Do it whenever I want, however I want, with whoever I want. Yeah. That's what that's what made me switch over to to park skating. But now I've been park skating for about what year is it? About three years now only. Three and a half years. So yeah. Damn. About about sixteen ye- Yeah, sixteen years in total. And how old are you? Twenty one. Just turned. Just turned twenty one. <laughs> So young. Mm, I played okay. roller derby yeah, back in 2005. I started with the LA Derby Dolls. I don't really want to go into this long, boring story about myself, but I played roller derby. And then, like, it was around when I was, like, in my 20s, it was really hard to work and play roller derby. And I was so obsessed with roller derby that I, like, finagled a job for myself you know, testing products and then like starting a shop and just making it so that I was combining like work and pleasure Mm -hmm. as much as I could until they were so intertwined. I went crazy. Like I had a league in Long Beach that was selling out and it was just way too hard trying to manage all the things that I signed up to do in my twenties. So I ended up leaving roller derby and, uh, the girl that I was dating at the time was a skateboarder and she, her and her friends were just so much fun and they would take me out street skating. And then I started skating on like the stuff that they were skating in. And I posted like some ledge trick at the Firestone ledges and I got such a reaction like, Oh my God. Good reaction. Yeah. Like a good Good. reaction from inliners and skateboarders that I knew and, and then I was like, I don't drink now, but this one night I was like, I used to love to like skate at night. And I was skating around the streets in Long Beach and I went by the Red Room and there was this guy, Vern Laird, who was wearing a Phillies uh, shirt. Mm-hmm. And I was like, Philly, because I'm from Philly. And he's like, get over here. What bearings you got on? I was like, bones, like only bones. <laughs> he's like, that's the right answer. I'm the TM for Bones, and I'm from Philly. Mm. I was like, no way. And we started talking outside of the bar, and he doesn't drink. And he's like, you need a ride home? (laughs) I was like, no, I'm fine. And I guess I, like, fell over. And he's like, no, I'll take you home. And there was just something about him that I just trusted and got in his car, and he drove me home safe. And then he started sending me links to, like, skateboarding clips, And I was like, hey, I know about this, but I don't really know about this. Like, you don't need to send me these links. I'm really only interested in roller skating. But if you ever want to make a roller skating video, like, I'm down. And he was like, I would if you wanted to. So then he put like a list of tricks together. And around the time I was, I guess, um, acknowledging the fact that I was a drunk. And... That project was like the first thing that I finished, completed, uh, like, you know, in sobriety. But it took like five years to get any time. Now I'm about seven years without alcohol. And and that's how I got into ramp skating. It's like, or like, I mean, I've always known about ramp skating because I used to work at Camp Woodward as a kid. My sister was a skateboarder and I was the arts and crafts teacher and I was into gymnastics and cheerleading and I knew about rollerblading. I learned about it there. And then I had some friends that bladed in college and in high school and I knew a lot. I rollerbladed and knew a lot about rollerblading, but uh, I hadn't really put skates into the skate park until around that time that I was doing the whole street stuff with Vern. 
this podcast feels heavy. <laughs> yeah. I, I knew it would be. Why? Because we're Cause happy we're people. Like, yeah, we are. We're very serious people, I think. Yeah, like we get in these, we, I'm sure that there will be little like, little bits of us goofing around, but like for the most part, I think we're, we're more uh, down to the, get down to the serious. What is it about skating that like really makes you tick? Like, what is it about skating that makes you so obsessed with skating? Like, why are we here making this podcast? What well, is those it? Those are different questions. Which one do you want to answer to? Why are we making the, the first podcast one. or what makes me, what makes me tick? The first one. Um, like the, the, the overall process, the, the learning, the falling, the, the celebration, the community, like the, just the whole, the whole process of like learning something and, and then feeling like you perfected that one thing, but then there's, there's so much more to learn and try to perfect. That's what I, we talk about it a lot. I love. Yeah. What I like about skating so much is like the feeling of achievement. Yeah. That's like, there's no better feel. I mean, orgasms are great, but the feeling of achievement it's similar, is like though. the, yeah, it's absolutely. Like, I didn't think I could, and then I did. Yeah, it makes me all tingly. Explosions. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, it's good. We're so obsessed with it that we're constantly talking about it. Yeah, and sometimes I feel that. Um, sometimes I think about it too much, and it makes me like too much of one thing is never is never good, and I I find myself overthinking things sometimes and it definitely plays a negative role in my thinking too hard about skating yeah. caring a lot about it yeah I can see that yeah caring too much about um like feeling the need to improve constantly it's not about that and like the conversations that we have are kind of heavy like you know just like the keeping a growth mindset about it all is like really challenging when you're doing really hard things it's a hard balance so i guess we kind of wondered if it's hard for you too yeah and we wanted to talk about the things that we don't see on the internet being talked about skating because we're constantly talking about them and we're wondering like, are there people talking about this? Do other people care about this? Is There have to be. So we're here to talk about it and talk about it with you guys <laughs> and have a, a, a nice big ongoing open conversation about roller skating and where it's going. What's changing. What it's doing. Yeah, what's new. What we're doing. I wish we had a sponsor to shout out. But let's talk sponsors and roller skating. <laughs> the band-aid off. All right. I haven't... <sighs> never been like... Okay, I have always forged my way with working f with a company. I have, not, have not had anyone approach me and say... Hey, we want to sponsor you. <laughs> Let me bring you onto the team. I personally, I have not. The way that I've gotten any of my sponsors is by like meeting someone and suggesting that they get into roller skating. Can you can you share with us the list of um, your your current yeah. sponsors and then maybe your your previous past companies you've worked with? Well, I don't even really consider, I mean, they're not, they're all, they're not even just, I mean, they're partners because we like make products together. So I have got Moxie and that's like, that is a partnership with Rydell. And I don't think there's anything else at Rydell that I, yeah, Moxie and Rydell. And then I have Triple Eight, but that's a partnership with Moxie. Um, and 187, which is also a partnership with Moxie. So Moxie works with 888 and 187, which is a, a merge, a merger. Um, and then I've got, uh, I don't know why I'm counting on my fingers, but uh, roller bones, wheels, uh, bones, bearings, 
Um, bones bearings, like we made a project together. Do they flow you? Do they flow you them. bearings? Yeah. At Christmas time, I get the most beautiful box of all the best stuff from That's Skate awesome. One, like coffee mugs and all the clothes that they carry, belts, hats. Every, they give me a big box at Christmas and then every one of every single kind of bearing. Sorry if you skate for Vern's and you don't get this. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe this is might be different for everybody, but Vern sends me an awesome box. Um, nice. And uh, with enough bearings for the year. And then roller bones, you know, we make that wheel, the estrogen wheel, the bull bomber. And, um, and then there's like a lot of like influencer work, I guess, that I'm not, I guess I have imposter syndrome about. I don't really feel like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. So there's like a lot of companies send me stuff, but I don't know how to really like insert them into my feed because I'm not like super organized about my feed. I just like yeah, to post I'm, when I want to post. I'm the same way. Yeah. I have a hard time uh, like, following you, through. Like you got Viper shades. Yeah, Would you I consider that a have... sponsorship or like a influencer gig? It's, de I mean, like, def I definitely don't call them sponsorships because like, it's not a, it could become an ongoing thing in the future. And I think then that could lean more towards like a sponsorship title. But like if someone just sends you a package to like rep their shit, I feel like that's more like a gig. Yeah. Almost like, like a self-titled gig because you're like doing it all yourself and like they all they're, they're, mm. they're giving you the product and basically saying like, take the photos. Yeah. Figure out what to do with it to like yeah. show our shit off. Yeah, it's not even a gig. You're right. It's like a yeah. responsibility. Because a gig, it would be somewhere that like... <laughs> Unpaid responsibility. You have to like, you know, yeah, you, you you have responsibility. You go somewhere and they like tell you what to do. You, they have, you have a very specific role in a gig. But I appreciate the stuff. In fact, and yeah. now I want to like bring it in on the next podcast and tell you all about skunk bags <laughs> and how they absorb all the, eat, they, all the odor from your like sweaty stuff in yeah, maybe your I'll bags. I'll wear and, some pits on the next... Yeah. Next episode. Thank um, you, Pit Viper, for those shades. They're all, they really are like the best sunglasses ever. They protect my eyes so much. <laughs> you look really cute wearing them. Thanks. Um, but I'm taking this like sports management class right now. So I'm a part of this group that has like, they're talking about athletes that are in the Olympics. They're on the road to the Olympics. So they have agents in place writing contracts that are fair so that those agents can also be paid on this like, you know, amount of money that this athlete is going to be getting. And I just don't think that like roller skaters have been taken seriously like that because we don't have the platform like the Olympics. Yeah, we don't have like the, to take us the, seriously. the establishment line. Yet. Yeah. So um, maybe it is a lot of influencer work that roller skate companies are really working with skaters on doing rather than sponsorships. I think there's a confusing yeah. definition and around sponsorship. It does also stem from like that it is so new and like a lot of company, no, no company wants to like put a lot of put money into something that they don't know if it's going to, how far it's going to go. Am I wrong in saying that? No, I think that you're giving the industry a lot of, cr like, a lot of, um, you know, not credit, but, like, you're, like, like, it hasn't been that, it hasn't, it's not that new. Like, roller derbies exist. No, 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 like, but I mean in, the, like, what we, like, park skating. Yeah. Like, that is pretty new. It feels like, like, skating's popularity is constantly changing and it's really difficult for like sponsors to like act, like get on board with what we're doing as roller skaters like yeah we're like we're doing roller derby and now we're doing now then it was dance skating was really big in 2020 and now it feels like ramp skating is going to be really big and it's just kind of this like roller skating moves around a lot there's yeah there's so many different ways to do it yeah, but back to the sponsorships, like, are you a roller derby skater out there that's been sponsored before? Do they call you up and ask, like, how did that work? Do they sponsor teams? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. They, like, my my derby team was, um, like, you get, we got S1 Float Us helmets. 
and uh, I I had like a shop sponsor when I played derby, but it was like the shop that my coach owned. And what would the shop do for you? Like support you in product? Yeah. Pay for your contest fees? No, well, there wasn't really fees to be. Did they pay we paid for your du- We paid dues. They paid your dues? No, no, no. We paid dues. But did your sponsor pay your dues? No. Um, did they pay for you to travel to like competitions? No. So they gave you product? Yeah. And like, yeah, if, was, and like when I was like, fuck, I was like 17. I was five. No, no. <laughs> it was illegal to sponsor me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I was 17. The fucking title of being sponsored for playing roller derby was cool enough. I didn't care if they were paying for my shit or not. I was like. Acknowledged. Yeah. That's all that I like wanted. No, I shouldn't say that's, that's all I wanted. At this point in your career, you need more. Yeah. Like you. Talk about it. I need like, (laughs) I mean. Money. Yeah, I need money. (laughs) I need to to be paid to. uh, It's it's a hard balance because I have so many events and things that people want me to go to. And that I, you know, obviously I would also, I want to go. But like, they're not. They bring in money, but not enough money to live in Southern California. Or to, to live anywhere, really. Like, I need. I need more income, but I can't get a job because I like have all these things that I want to do and I want to follow my dreams. So I'm not going to like say no to like, you know, if you ask me to go to Barcelona, I'm not going to say like, no, sorry, I have to go work at Starbucks or like, you know, like I don't want to, I want to follow my dreams and make it work. And I see it working better in the future, you know, by getting money from sponsors or money from my name on a product or my, you had your name on a product. I did. And I did make, you do have it. Actually, yes. it's right. Yeah. I'm looking at it. It's right behind it. us. Mm. Pull it out. Can you reach it? Yes. Let's talk yeah. about this. Okay. Where's yours? What the heck? Okay. Let's talk about my Yeah, Shell's going to Shell's going to get hers. All right. Okay. Spicy and Ivy and I have Wheels. There's not very many skaters out there that have wheels. Kathleen, Skate Witch had a wheel. Barbie Think- has a wheel. Skate, yeah. Skate Witch was the first. Mm-hmm. Well, she was the first park roller skater to have one, but Richard Humphrey actually had a dance wheel that, that came is, from Roller Bones. That is true. First. that I think that might be the first signature wheel in the 2000s. <laughs> I don't know what happened uh, yeah. in the 70s. I don't know much. But uh, I can't imagine Renee Holgreen not having a wheel or Brian, Brian Wainwright not having one, but... Uh, eventually we'll have some of those guys on here and we'll ask them. Well, that'd be cool. But we got wheels. Um, yeah, we, we, we have, we also have some, we have wheels. Let's talk about them. You, you go first. Oh, oh look, you got all yellows. So we broke these up cause they're like, we have four th- usually they come, you know, four to a box, but they come in two different shapes. They're one one a, um, we took like the old D rods logo and added roller skates to it. So it was like a backflipping roller skate. And it was weird. Like I always uh, promoted myself as estrogen because I thought that was a really marketable, you know, name. And everybody in roller derby knew me as that. Everybody that I knew in roller derby knew me as estrogen. But when they made the like street part with me, Vern was like, no, nah, roller derby name. No, that's stupid. We're going to use your real name. <laughs> I was like, yeah. okay, so now my real name's on here. I, uh, but my, my roller derby name is on. Do you wish, did, do you like that? Do you wish that it said estrogen on the wheel? I don't care. I don't know. I mean, I don't care. My, I'm to ha- Like my dad was a skateboarder. So to see like my name on a wheel, like, or for him to see his name on a wheel was like really fucking awesome. Yeah. But so that, that was cool. But let's talk about your wheels, Ivy. Um, they're 52 millimeters, which means they're very short, super ground control. I skate like skateboard wheels when I'm not skating these. So I wanted to make something similar to that. Something that was shaped it, like a skateboard. Wheel. Yeah. Is a skateboard wheel, but is made by a roller skater, which I think is pretty cool. Um, yeah. 101A, same hardness as Michelle's. 
I made them with Wild Bones, the slider company that I rode for for quite a while. And Wild Bones is, I mean, I met him in Colorado and it was like one guy that was going to start a shop and yeah, then and it then turned it into a store and now he makes sliders and wheels. Um, yeah, I mean, he's not, I don't, I mean, I could be totally speaking wrong, but last that I knew, I don't think he's making wheels at the moment. I think he's just oh, okay. working on slide blocks, started making toe stops. I know oh. that he started making toe stops. Um, yeah, and owns like a skate shop in Colorado, or in Manitou Springs, right outside of Colorado Springs, where I'm from. I really, I really wish with everything in my heart that I was known just for my name. Really? Oh my God, yeah. Dude, Spicy Ivy doesn't fucking mean anything. Obviously, I like, I, you put me in the red. Yeah, dude, it's like, like we're it's just supposed rhymed. to be hot and cold. Eighth grade, picture this, little eighth grade <laughs> Ivy. She's trying to come up with a new Instagram username. Sp spicy. It was between Spicy Ivy and Icy Ivy. Oh, and I chose really? Spicy. Yeah, just to make, just to be my fucking Instagram username in eighth grade. And then it's just stuck. And then that's what like now then then everyone just started calling me that. Then that fucking there's people out there that don't even know my goddamn name is Ivy. They just All think right. I'm spicy. Oh yeah, they do call you. Yeah, spicy. there's people that just and then and they're like, "What? What's your name?" It gets in my goddamn bio. I couldn't even pronounce it when the show started. What? I was like, "Your name is RV Wall." Oh well, yeah. I mean, but like, I I go by with with my middle name for that reason. But that's fine. Like, I'm fine. What's with your middle name? Rose. Oh yeah, duh, I knew that. Because yeah, that guy. But like, no one thinks my name is that's my name. Like. So yeah, I would have really. Well, the next one. Yeah, I had in my. Put your real name on there. In my little journal, my, off my the little, wall. Yeah, maybe Vans would have a problem with that. Oh, de <laughs> definitely. We could we could spin it off of that. But yeah, in my in my little journal, I have a little drawing. I was doing some dreaming. I did a little drawing of a wheel, and I put my real name on Do it. Do not roll your eyes when you say I was doing a little dreaming. <laughs> like that's how. Everything Woma Fest. Yeah. It's yeah, word so at work. Ne this, the next, uh, there will be no other spicy ivy wheel. There will be an ivy rose wheel. Oh, news. Yeah. News flash. I won't say when, I won't say how, but I will These say These babies that that just will got more happening. valuable. <laughs> yeah, man. And those, yeah, th these will never, these... It's a little unfortunate. These will never be made again. So if you got some of these, hold on to them. If you want. You don't have to. I will. Yeah, you can. Right now. You have a pair? I never sent you a no, pair, did I? I sent you a pair. No, you didn't. Yes. No, I, you did not. Michelle, you didn't bitch. send me a pair. No, because it, I, I remember. We talked we about it. We promised we were going to trade. I know. The and first I time I met you. you wheels? But my... No, because my... Wheels. my I probably told you not to because my, my leg was broken. Oh, they came out then? No, I, my wheels came out while my leg was broken. Mm. But my, oh, did my wheels come out before or after? Why I didn't you send me them? Because <laughs> I don't remember if it happened before or after I visited. I really you. want them. Not in a packaging, like on my feet. I want to try them. Uh, well, when I go, oh, I'm going home on the 5th. So I'll look for some. I'll grab you some. Sorry. Thanks. Thank you for everyone that supported me on them. Cause like, I'm really, I'm just trying to make it out here by skating and doing things with skating. And if you purchased my wheel, then you made that possible for me. You've got me where I am now. So thank you. If you've been, been a supporter. All right. So I talked about my sponsors. Who are your sponsors, Ivy? Um, I guess officially right now, my only like real sponsor is Moxie and I, which is a flow sponsorship. Yeah. But I get, I get, I get everything that I need from Moxie pretty much. Like I couldn't really, I am also on flow for, um, Bronson bearings, which is really cool. I'm really stoked to be a part of that. Um, first roller skater. 
that they've put on, which is pretty cool. Uh, yeah, but I mean, other than that, like I feel pretty. <coughs> and soda. <clears throat> huh? Soda? Oh, you're on a Jones soda. I am on a Jones soda. <laughs> That's like dreamy. <laughs> like that's that. humongous. Do, do people know that? No, I have not. Like, like this, like carton of sodas showed up to our apartment last month, and I was like, "What? Jones is sending you soda?" And Ivy's like, "Yeah, I'm on a bottle." <laughs> like what? Yeah, they hit me up. Uh, like uh, we, it's been in, in the works for a while now. Like since Barcelona ish time. Yeah. And they, they, yeah, they were like, they're doing this we, new, like, you need that. And they're offering one next time. They're at home. Okay. Um, they're doing this new, like they have like an, an app. Joan Soda came out with an app and they did this whole like interactive bottle thing where they like, um, they chose like a bunch of other athletes and other people with interesting hobbies, like Chad Hornish, the blader. He also got one. Um, he's so good. Yeah. He's one of my favorite favorite people to watch but they uh you take they'd like take your videos and choose one frame of it and they put it on the outside of the bottle and then you can download the app and scan the bottle with the app and it'll like play the video on your phone like on the bottle oh i'll wow. have to bring my ph- I, I should have brought one i we, we i could have shown you guys all right we'll do a reveal in episode two yeah it'll be my big like because i haven't i haven't like posted about it at all what other sponsors? Um, Phantom. Phantom Skate. You oh, too. Yeah. Don't forget about Phantom. it. Phantom. Well, yeah, it's hard to remember because no. we haven't really made anything. I haven't made anything yet for Carly, but Carly, our good friend, Roller Goalie on Instagram, she started the sweetest little wax company. So cute. She pours all these little wax molds. Uh, pours wax, pours wax in all these cute little molds, like all different shapes. And then she had this company called Pretty Slick Skate Wax. But Carly's really into like production and video making, and she put together um, roller skating's very first street full length video called Street Fighters. So I think I don't know. I don't want to speak for Carly, but it seems like she started a product line to see if it would stick and. Everybody fell in love with it. And she's like, all right, I'm going to go full blast with a production yeah. company and roll under. There's roll so my much more under. to Carly than just wax. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So much. <laughs> I don't think about wax. I don't think of Carly at all. Carly. No, me neither. I mean, it, it ties into street skating. When I think about street skating, I think about Carly, but like. When I think about Carly, I think about she is a really incredible, high functioning, productive adult. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she's very. Oh, yeah. Like she's business. She doesn't seem like she would be business. She's fun, too. She's super fun to hang out with. But um, she really takes she is, care of a lot. She's smart. And she's really great with. Yeah. So that's one of my. And, she has a new company phantom skate and that we we both ride for th- for that what other sponsors you got ivy i don't know i'm trying to think i okay. had this i had this whole i only put i only put phantom bronson and moxie down for my who would your dream sponsors be if you could have any um so for the longest time I would have said Red Bull. And I really just wanted Red Bull for the like. The helmet? (laughs) No, actually, that's like one of the main reasons that I don't fucking want it anymore. I feel like their sponsored skaters become like an employee more than like a sponsored skater at that point. Because you can't do anything without advertising. Red Bull. Red Bull. Most Red Bull skaters, you don't think of them as. You just think of Red Bull because yeah, that's all helmet, you see on them. Right. Yeah. Like it. And Although Lauren much, I think of. Yeah. This is not, the this is actually like not strength. directed towards, towards Lauren. Yeah, in Lauren the much bit. is a, a Red Bull. I t- I'm, I'm thinking more like BMX skateboarding. But no, when I just think of generally, you're totally right. Yeah. And like me and John actually had like a, uh, a conversation about that this morning that like, it turns into this, like, I don't know. 
like I just said, it turned into a weird thing about advertisement and not like support. Yeah. Almost. Wanting to represent expression yeah. or individuality, which is what these sports are usually and about. Same <laughs> with like monster and rockstar. What's up with these energy drink brands and making you wear the damn helmets with their, I guess that's, all three of them. I got a lot of money and yeah. But anyways, I think what um, drove me to this. want Red Bull was the like, I think like I would feel like an athlete. Like I would feel like a real athlete if I was sponsored by Red Bull. Because when I think of Red Bull athletes, I think of like real athletes that are also employees to Red Bull at that point. But they like, you know, they got there by being, by doing gnarly shit. And that's like, I would feel very recognized if, if Red Bull recognized me. But then now I'm at like, I don't really care about sponsors. Like, I don't really think about sponsors anymore. I think about, how to, how to make money. <laughs> <laughs> and by the conversations that I have, like with you and Miguel and John and, you know, just people that have been in the industry for a long time, it sounds like to get money, you got to make your own companies. Make ideas happen. Yeah, exactly. And not rely on Red Bull and the, yeah, the promise of a new day. Yeah, exactly. I would love if Whole Foods wasn't owned by Amazon. Oh, that's That would good. be my dream sponsor. That's, that's a good one. Uh, I would love the Korean spa. Oh, as fuck a sponsor. yeah. Oh my God. If a spa sponsored us. Or like, just like a good chiropractor, a yeah. great body worker. I don't know. My answers may be a bit mature. <laughs> No, I mean, I would love like, if like I could get like a personal trainer to sponsor yeah. me, like a, like a, like a gym to sponsor me. And they like, you know, specialized on my, my athletic training. <laughs> um, a weed sponsor would be sick. Yeah. Not for me. Am I, I allowed to say weed. that? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I smoke weed. I'm, I'm not trying to hide it. Weed maps. Stizzy also sponsors people. Yeah, See, says he sponsors Nemo. Oh, but I don't want, I, is that a sponsorship or is that more of like the affiliation? Like, oh yeah, the gig, the gig sort of. I, um, I honestly self. don't think there is a sponsorship in skating because how many people are being paid to rep products? Like just well, to yeah, wear them, you know. What like, is the, if you're being asked to tag something? That's a gig that you're. It's like a give get. I don't. You know. I don't know. And I think that that comes to um, play like with competitions more because I think initially, like, correct me if I'm wrong, but sponsorships started or maybe not started, but play a, play a big role in competitions as far as like you rep your sponsors at a competition. And that's why they like, yeah, like Joe Atkinson, he's got to fly all over the world. Like he's not, that's not on his dime. He has yeah. to ask the support of his industry. Exactly. So that he can like rep those brands on television and win contests. Yeah, And we don't have that like support from companies yet because there's no like platform. where to put that support. Yeah. There's no platform for that. Yeah. And I think that that ties back to the, the cost of the fee to register for, for spring cup. I think a lot of people were um, like very, like really shocked at the fact that they were being asked to pay, you know, $200 if they wanted to compete in street and mini, but in, in, in my eyes, and this is from experience and talking to people who have competed in the past, but like your sponsors pay for your, your entry fee because you're repping your sponsors and you, and you know, you did. Yeah. And, and, but, and, and I think that most, um, most skate companies like caught on to that, that pattern. But like, since we haven't had any competitions before, a lot of skaters didn't know that that's like how it worked. And yeah, a lot of people were like, Whoa, what the fuck? Like $200 seriously. But it's like, here's that. That's in, in my opinion, that's your sponsor's job to yeah. cover that fee. That's such a good point. Yeah. That was the first time that we actually could do that. Cause yeah. there was yeah. cool. All right. We need sponsors to sponsor yeah. the events, to sponsor the athletes, to sponsor the podcast. Maybe, maybe to sponsor the podcast. Pew, pew. Chilies and scoops. We're coming out with rad merch, good episodes. Interesting. And you can sponsor and give us money. 
<laughs> yep. Because we need money to live. Yeah. Ditto. <laughs> yeah, that summed it up pretty much. What is a pro in roller skating? Uh, well, I, I don't really think that there is such thing. Okay, so. In roller skating. There will be though, right? Yeah, absolutely. Because you're going to be one. Yeah, and I mean like, in as far as like. What's it, what, what are you doing as a pro? Like, what do you think, what do, what do pros do? They go, they compete. They take their sports seriously. They've got enough time to condition their bodies to complete projects to get that constant sense of achievement. It's a lifestyle. It's like a, oh, like it's more than a lifestyle when you're a professional. It's like your, that's your, your whole thing is to skate is to skate. That's all you do. Right. I don't know anyone doing that. In roller skating? I don't, I don't, I personally don't know anybody doing that. Like, because I'm like I, Joe, Joe Atkinson does that. Yeah. But I don't know anyone in roller skating that does that without like influencer work or oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. hustling. Yeah. Another like, or job like their own or, merch sort of. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we just don't have the, um, we don't have pros. We don't have the platform to do it yet. Yeah. We don't have enough like stability and like. What's it take? I don't know. I wish I knew. That's a good question. Do you know? Yeah. Okay. I think it takes an association. I think it takes a lot of uh, events and competitions. Time. I think it takes ranking. It takes organizing. And it takes a lot of people stepping up and deciding to take control of something that's really important to everyone. Yeah. Like roller derby did. Yeah. But no one went pro in roller derby. Really? Like you wouldn't consider Lauren much a pro athlete. I guess she has another job that I don't know about, but she looks to me like a pro athlete. And I bet a lot of people but would it's assume like that also you are like, too. Yeah. And I mean, that's what I was about to say. Like, I guess I am like, I don't work. I don't do other work. DoorDash every now and then. And, but, and, and also do like the influencer work, like you said, like gigs with, with companies and stuff. But like, I just try to make my money off of skating. But what I, why I don't, I don't consider myself a professional because like, I don't make enough to like live, you know? Yeah. And there's that's, like, that there's has nothing a, to do with, your skill, I don't think it, I think it has no, a lot to do with I don't the think so need either. for pros. Yeah, absolutely. It's easier for companies to pay people a sh for a short period of time than invest in an individual. What do you think the like, definition of being like a professional athlete is? Um, dedicating 100% of your time to the the sport you think there do you do you think there is like a line of like requirement to be considered professional like for the longest time i was like just because i have my name on a wheel that makes me pro. yeah because in, in yeah other industries if you get a board sponsor you, yeah that's, that's when you, when turn, you turn pro, pro. when, and you, you, when would, you get your name on a board but i would yeah um, and I'm sure there's skateboard companies out there that like only print 500 boards and the skater may only get a thousand bucks mm -hmm. and is considered pro and still can't pay next month's Their bills. rent. Yeah. Yeah. That's what, I, that's a really good point. We're talking about this because there's a lot of lies out there in marketing. Yeah. <laughs> there's like, like we were just talking to a pro skater about a shoe deal. And it was like not, it was, it was shocking. less than you could afford to live in California for a year on a shoe deal. And I was just like, and like a big shoe, a, a like known shoe company that like humongous shoe company makes millions billions, of dollars, billions of dollars. Oh, well, we're just people. <laughs> yeah. At least we like what we do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right? True. You're right. At least we have fun. Yeah. At least we there's plenty of people about what we do. Yeah, there's plenty of people that are like just as stressed out about money as I am that are like 
making the money that they do have by doing some like shitty. I used to lie for a living. What do you mean? Like I used to be a public relations director. So I would write like press releases and, and, and like pitch letters for magazines about athletes that weren't that good. Mm -hmm. But I was saying that they were the world's best. Mm -hmm. And I I just felt like a liar. You know, like I'm selling it. Truth. (laughs) <laughs> no, they weren't the world's best at all. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, <laughs> I feel like a real liar. I was like, I gotta change my name now. <laughs> That's okay. I was uh, doing service stuff before this. I probably would. That's probably what I'd be doing, right? Like serving. I think, like waiting. Yeah, yeah. That's what I. Yeah. I mean, I was hell bent on being a waitress. Like, I lo- wanted to choose the simple life. I thought that was like, that's really smart. A so just life. waitress forever? Yeah, I really, I really like, my boyfriend was like, you're the one for me. Because <laughs> you wanted to waitress forever. Yeah, because I just wanted to like, I just wanted a simple life. I wanted, yeah, to waitress and have a family. Play house. Huh? Play house. Yeah, I don't know what the hell I was thinking. Yeah, that sounds not fun. Oh, Yeah. You can miss me with that. Well, and it just seemed like being really um, ambitious is a lot of work. And I'm used to being ambitious. And it's always putting my, it's always putting me in this situation where I'm like stressed out. Like today I was just, yeah. Yeah, but then it's the reward. So rewarding. It is. Being ambitious. Yeah. Because like, yeah, it doesn't always work out, but when it does, man, it feels good. Do it or don't. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't do it, somebody else probably will. Let's talk eventually. about our magazines. Okay. Dang, how are these, like... We got a lot in common, so... Like, I know. I, 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 this is making me realize how many... Um, Similar accomplishments we have. Yeah. Well, we're, we both have covers on Dog Days Magazine. All right, and I'm going to be honest. When I got this cover in the mail, I was like, this, Miguel, all these magazines go under this one anytime any guests come. Like, this is the magazine that I want on my coffee Michelle. table when any guests come. This is the proudest I th- I don't even think I knew you that well no you didn't when this didn't. happened but no. I was just like this photo this is amazing thanks Shell. I love it and it's on a cover of a magazine Ivy doing a sick trick and then my magazine <laughs> my cover it's silly it's a <laughs> it's an adorable photo so I'm grabbing the bull by the horns yeah <laughs> like you do. You do best. <laughs> not jealous at all. Oh my God, stop. <laughs> Shut up. You're not allowed to be jealous of I know. me, Michelle. I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> well, I just figured, you know, you do like I like I've tried to not be a party girl for a long time. And then like to s I had no idea. I mean, this was me being a party girl. Like I had no we idea this was going to be the cover of a magazine. I was like, "Well, you let him take photos at a all, party." The bull is not even a full size bull it's, face. Like I have real bull miniature. faces, but <laughs> my friend Ed came and brought me these little bull miniatures, which was harder. But like, yeah, whatever. Anyway, she did it. Though. I'm wearing stockings. It's like a whole other skill, Shell. I couldn't do it. I didn't even fuck. I didn't even try. I forgot we really were doing this. Yeah, no, they were like, who are you doing it with? Caitlin, right? Yeah, my next door neighbor. Oh my God, no, Caitlin and was Caitlin. so good at it. Yeah. Okay, so Dog Days Magazine is the most legitimate magazine that roller skating has got. A, a couple puts this together from Germany. The skater that started this magazine is named Marta. She's a a wonderful human being. She rolls. Um, They used to have like a, uh, I think there used to be more issues in a year, but now they do an annual, like a journal. 
So Moxie Roller Skates just picked up distribution and you can purchase Dog Days magazines on moxieskates.com and uh, buy it in the United States. And it comes signed by me and Courtney Shove, who has a centerfold spread. Mm. Um, yeah, this magazine's awesome. Like full color, so high quality. It's amazing. And then like the articles are, they feel so well written, but they're really um, recorded. Yeah. So Marta like interviews you on um, like a recording audio device. So they, I did my, you, I did mine over, uh, over FaceTime with someone other than Marta. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, uh, um, another girl wrote my article. I can't remember her name off the top of my head. Well, I Rihanna. was interviewed in Spain for mine on next to Ivy. Yes, Ivy was there I for was the interview. sitting right there. Um, yeah, it was just like off the cuff. There's a ton of curse words I'm not proud of in there. I don't know why. It's raw. But, it's real. But yeah, it's like a, it's audio and it reads really well. Katie's also in this. Katie Baird. That's such an amazing photo. Bambi Bloodlust. I cannot wait. Like that is a skater I'm really excited to see at Quad Cup. And the mm -hmm. reason why is because Katie's like extremely talented and very disciplined to the like to skating, like is always practicing. And whenever I'm like skating with her, I'm like, damn, you're so good. And they don't, they, they like promote for a living. Like they do a lot of right all social media and they're like responsible for promoting a lot. So I don't think they promote themselves as much as they could. Or as, yeah, she should definitely, she's an amazing skater. Yeah, we're like hungry for your she's skating, been, yeah. Bambi. Oh my God. And I can hear her. She's like, no, I know. <laughs> But Bambi is going to yeah. kill it I'm at really, Quad Cup. I've I'm never, calling it now. She's going to blow minds. Yeah. She always she's, does. She's, she's That's one like of those her. People. She was such a um, like big force in my beginning park skating career. Like I, I looked up to her a lot and I feel like not enough new park skaters know about her these, these days. Yeah. So th and that's, like, that's what I mean in, in an example of like, people are going to be surprised with the people that are showing up at quad cup. Okay. All right. Yeah. Tell me how this happened for you. Uh, Marta hit me up and said that they really wanted to do a feature on me. And this was when I was like, um, this was like in the midst of the pandemic. So like, it's when I was starting to uh, gain, gain the following that I have on Instagram. And like, I was getting better at skating. I was you know, l learning a lot of stuff and I was also going through my, um, my whole hair thing, which was like very eye catching and it, it was a good story to tell. All right. There's a lot to unpack. So I told that story <laughs> in the, the magazine. I think you might like, I don't, I don't know any other park skaters that blew up the way that you did during the pandemic. Are there any? I don't know. Well, how did that happen? Tell us about that. I don't really know. I have a hard time answering that question when people ask me. Um, it just kind of happened. Like they say like fame doesn't happen overnight, but like it kind of did for me. Like there were a couple nights where it happened overnight. Like it just continued to, to grow. But like, was there like, there was a moment for me when the bones video went viral and I had like 500 followers and like every day it was like, yeah. Oh my God. So there was this, I posted 5. this seven and 8.9 <laughs> and like what was happening. So I posted this video, um, of like, I don't know. There were some impressive tricks, but there were also some just like bullshitting. Like I would never call them like, I, I, they're not like hard tricks for me. So it wasn't like a, a mind blowing video for me, but then it like blew the fuck up and got like 13 million views or some crazy shit like that. And like it happened overnight and I woke up with like a hundred thousand fucking followers. Like 
Did Instagram post it? Um, yeah, like uh, they posted. Uh, the they account. posted a different clip, but yeah, like then later on in the future, um, Instagram hit me up and was like, "You, we want to tell your story." And so they like posted one of my clips on like the the actual Instagram account, which was really cool. I got a lot of followers from that, which was, it was cool, but it was, it's weird because like, I didn't ask for any of it. Like it just happened by ch chance that like my videos blew up and then Instagram saw them. And then, and then the Olympics saw me and messaged me and it's like, it, it's all, it, it's all just luck. You know, wait, then the Olympics saw you. <laughs> yeah. The Olympics messaged me on Instagram last year. The Olympic channel. Yeah. That's so funny. Yeah. And they were like, um, Hey, we want to use your video to like promote the Olympic movement. Like, can we post one of your clips? And so they, then the Olympics posted me. What do you think it is about your clips? That is so awesome. Um, back to having fun. You can tell, I, I do think that like, you can tell I'm having fun while I'm doing it, which is like, I think that that's a big thing. in like making other people want to do it is like seeing how much fun I'm having. And that's all I want to do. Like, you know, since I was given this giant platform and it's hard to navigate it sometimes and run it because like, there's so many people. So like the only, I just try to look at it as like, just make people want to do what they want to do and like not let other people decide for you or like not let other people make you scared to go do what you want to do. And like, whether it's roller skating or not, like just be inspired, go have fun. And like, But there's a lot of people that don't get that message from my Instagram and that's okay. There's haters. But back to the magazine. Yeah, um, we um, set up an interview and I did an interview with Brianna on the phone and she was a sweetheart and she told my story very well. And I got some great photos with Christian Murdoch and Mike Bargaz. I don't know how to, I'm, I don't think I'm pronouncing his last name right, but. I have to shout out Lenny Gilmore. Yes, please do. Lenny's amazing. He took all of our photos. I think he shot Shub too. Who took the cover? Christian. Christian Murdoch. And where were you? At Memorial Skate Park in Colorado Springs. My little, my home park. It's not little at all. My home park. It's huge. That's where I learned to, learned to park skate and learned all my flips and my grinds and my, all my stuff. I was there. <laughs> I'm trying to get healthier. I'm like doing a lung cleanse right now. I envy you for that. I wish that I was doing this. I was envious of my friend legs because she started like three months earlier than me trying to get healthier. Yeah. And she's doing really good. I know. I'm trying to get healthier in other ways. Like I really me. We've been making smoothies every morning with like nice supplements and like, like super, super food stuff and, trying to get a better diet, eat, just eat better in general, um, yoga, meditation, a better. What? Doubt it, but okay. Okay, no meditation, <laughs> but yoga. Sometimes I could, I could, I meditate sometimes while I'm doing the yoga. Wait, no, Michelle, I picked up crocheting and it's very meditating. I, yeah. Okay, are you doing it with your fingers or with a hook? You with can do hook. it with your fingers. With a hook. And like you can make a full blanket with your fingers in an hour. I know my mom made one. Yeah. I, I made a pair of pants one. for Rob G. Oh, that's awesome. And Dita. I like crocheting. Yeah, maybe I'll try the hand one. Um, Fuck, how did we start talking about crocheting? Because we were talking about like skaters getting healthy. Oh, yeah. Well, I meditate while I crochet. Yeah. How about that? What do you do to be a healthy skater out there? Um, Tell us. Tell us in the comments. Are oh, you a healthy you're skater? Not asking me. Are, you, are you a healthy skater? We're trying to be them. Yeah, give us encouragement and like ways to. <laughs> feel healthy like what's something get a job literally <laughs> that one's for me <laughs> how 
How have you been on the sugar? Good. Not me. Actually. Real good. I've been all right. But after this, like, I want hug We're life gonna go with all my friends. Yeah, I want to go skate okay. to the hug life. It'll be my second ice cream of the day. Really? Yeah, we got ice cream when we got... This oh, is there. like my fifth coffee. This is really what I need to kick next. Coffee? You are addicted as hell to that stuff. It's insane. Sometimes I worry when you drink like... Do you ever... She, she drinks like... Let's not talk about it. I quit. Are so you embarrassed? Bad. Yes. You shouldn't be embarrassed. Yeah. I'm like excess. No, dude, you're like a superhero when it comes to that shit. You should be like stoked that you can handle that much caffeine. I could never, I think my body would actually I like, only, I mean, I use, I, I get four shots every time because then it says quad. You're ridiculous. <laughs> you're fucking ridiculous. <laughs> Yeah, Starbucks started sponsoring athletes. Really? But you have to have a job there. What? So don't be poo pooing that. Maybe Chipotle Starbucks would job. sponsor us. I've Ew. seen Chipotle. Ooh. They sponsor like Jagger Eaton. Hmm. He's in the Olympics, though. We should be in the Olympics. Yeah. Why, are you qu why is there a question mark after that? Yes, it should be a yes I period. Be in the Olympics. Why? Okay. I want to write the contracts to get the athletes in the Olympics. You get me there. Yeah. You help I me get there. People on the road to the Olympics. I got to get better if I'm going to go to the Olympics. So I'm going to learn. We are getting better. Yeah. Like, yeah, I really feel like my career in skating just started. I mean, career meaning like, like I hadn't amounted to anything until last month when I did something that I've always wanted to do since I was 13. And now it is on. Yeah. Now that was it's like on. a <laughs> 39. That was, the, I, that was a very eye opening moment for you, Michelle. Yeah. I'm like, Oh awesome. shit. I can, I can do it. Yeah. And now and it's going to like, now I get healthy. Now you're, you're unstoppable. I don't know how to get healthy. Stretch. I've been stretching. Yeah. Before, after, during my skate sessions. I'm really bad at like a self-practice. I need to go to a place. Like I need structure. Yeah, I, I get that. Like okay. I used to love going to the roller rink. And I don't go anywhere. I guess the pandemic just kind of like kicked me out of that place. And like yoga, uh -huh. I just went back for the first time after years of not going to a studio. And like, it was awesome. It was I love, I love doing yoga at a studio. It's different. It hits different. All right. Episode one. In the can. We did episode it. Episode one. This was episode one. Was it good enough? Should we do it? Was it good enough? Tell us. I don't like it. Yeah, I don't. Tell us if you like having it. Having a hard, a hard, hard gauge. Tell us if you like it. Tell us if you don't like it. What we can do to fix. Subscribe, be a hater, whatever you're doing, engage. Yeah. That's, that's, that's all we, we need. That's all we need is for you to engage. Hey, all you want down there. Michelle, you're... <laughs> <laughs> what is with, the, with these faces? I love voices. I okay. don't know. I like to... <laughs> Not... Not be me a lot. <laughs> okay. Is so that concludes episode uno. That was it. What did you think? Let yeah. us know. Um, Subscribe, like, like follow, find us on the gram. We'll probably have a Patreon. We are skaters. We have class. Mess with us. We'll kick your ass. Just kidding. If you want to sponsor us, we're here. <laughs> our episodes yeah. are sponsorable. It feels one, it feels weird to listen to a podcast. It feels weird to listen to a podcast where there's not like a, a little commercial break where we All right, and now we're gonna take a second to thank our sponsor for the episode. Oh God, but like the podcasts that like really do it, like fucking Rogan, come on. Yeah. They're like nine minutes long. Yeah, we won't do that to you. We're not doing we that. We, we won't Maybe do that a little guys. dancing QR code that you can like take a picture with your phone, but I'm not going to be doing no one minute long recordings. Of no, 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 no. 
Golgi apple cider vinegar tablets. No, no, we will not be doing that. Although they want me but to if you want to like astro. give us coffee to, for us to drink, you know, we could throw, we could throw in the little, and today we're drinking the bucks. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you to our unofficial sponsor, Starbucks. It's 5 a.m. Everyone. We're doing our best. Okay. <laughs> Michelle. <laughs> this is the outro. We started four hours ago. Oh, it's almost a new day. Can you believe we, we thought that we would be able to film multiple episodes in one night? How long do you want the podcast to be? Yeah, is this too long? Are you guys bored? Was this boring? Just, yeah. An open, this is an open conversation outro section. <laughs> Thank you. I don't want to say goodbye. For watching. <laughs> I don't want to say goodbye. We don't have to. Please Kenneth. write to us if you would like to be on our <laughs> podcast. <laughs> don't know how to shut up. <laughs> like, button, subscribe. <laughs> podcast monster. Chilies and scoops. All right. That's the wrap. Eee! Bye.